Here's another example of electric potential and potential energy of point charges. Small object with a mass of 1 milligram carries 3.125 times 10 to the 12 extra electrons. When it passes point A, it is moving at 14.15 meters per second, and when it passes point B, it is moving at 10 meters per second. The electric forces are the only ones acting on it. Sketch electric field vectors at points A and B, and sketch an electric field line through point C. Part B, what is the potential difference between points B and A, meaning VBA or VB minus VA? And if A is at 25 volts, what is the electric potential at B? First of all, if the object carries extra electrons, it means that it's negative. And we have a negative particle that is slowing down. So if only electric forces are acting on it, it has to be gaining potential energy. And negative particles gain potential energy when they move to a place of lower electric potential. On the picture, it means that the place of higher electric potential is more in the upper left-hand corner, and the place of lower electric potential is in the lower left-hand corner. To draw my electric field vectors, I'm going to begin by drawing a line that is perpendicular to the equipotential surfaces at points A and B. Also, the electric field is going to be stronger at point A than at point B, and I can tell that because the equipotential surfaces are more closely spaced where point A is than they are where point B is. So here are my two electric field vectors longer at point A because the field is stronger and shorter at point B and perpendicular to the equipotential surfaces. Now to draw the field line through point C, I'm going to draw little lines perpendicular to each of the equipotential surfaces and I'm going to join them and add the arrow going from the place of high potential to the place of low potential. Part B now. Well, first we'll figure out the charge of the particle. So the particle has 3.125 10 to the 12 extra electrons, which we multiply by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs per electron. The particle has a charge of minus 1 half microcoulombs. Then I calculate the initial kinetic energy of the particle, 1 half multiplied by the mass. Remember that one milligram is actually 10 to the negative 6 kilos and multiplied by the speed squared, so 14.15 squared and that gives us 1 times 10 to the negative 4 joules. The final kinetic energy of the particle is 1 half multiplied by the mass multiplied by the final speed squared and that's 5 times 10 to the negative 5 joules, or 0 0.5 10 to the negative 4 joules. Let's use conservation of energy. The initial potential energy of the particle at point A is the charge times the potential at point A. The initial kinetic energy we just calculated. Only the electric forces act on the particle. That means that there's no work done by non-conservative forces, such as friction or anything else. The final potential energy is the charge multiplied by the potential at point B and we just calculated the final kinetic energy. So we're going to rearrange the equation to solve for VB minus VA. That involves putting all the kinetic energies on one side and having QVB minus QVA on the other side and then we can factor the charge and that leaves us with VB minus VA. VB minus VA is the difference between the initial and the final kinetic energy divided by the charge. So 1 times 10 to the negative 4 joules minus 5 times 10 to the negative 5 joules, the whole thing divided by 1 half microcoulomb, negative of course, gives us minus 100 volts between points B and point A. If the potential at A is 25 volts and B is at an electric potential 100 volts lower, it means that B is at an electric potential of negative 75 volts. 
and I can go back to my initial diagram and relabel the equipotential surfaces. A on the 25 volt line, and because there are four lines after that, the next line would be 0, and then minus 25, minus 50, and B is on the negative 75 volt line. Spread the joy of physics!